Okay, so today we're starting the second part of kinematics. Um, we're going to discover two equations that are going to become very instrumental for us. Some people would probably say they were the two most important equations in all of physics, two most in fundamental equations in all of physics. They certainly are the two most fundamental in kinematics. They are not on the first test, um, but they will be on the next one. And what they are, the first one is to find distance traveled or displacement during a constant velocity. So that'll be the first equation. And the second one will be to find the final speed or the final velocity during constant acceleration. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to derive these two equations for you. I will never ask you to derive them, but I want you to see where they come from so that you know we're not just making them up. They actually come from equations that we already know. Okay, so what are the equations we already know? Well, we know from perhaps grade 10 science, or if not earlier this semester, we know the equation A is equal to Vf minus Vi over delta T. Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over the time. And we can rearrange this for final velocity by multiplying by the delta T and taking the VI over. So it'll become VF is equal to VI plus A delta T if we rearrange it, okay? What else do we know? Well, we know the average of anything. So this was the first thing we know. We know the average of anything is just the two things added together and divided by two. So that means the average velocity would be equal to the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two. So we could, um, we could rearrange, or we could sub, if we have our VF here, we could take that and we could sub it in right here. Okay, so it would become VF, or VAV is equal to VI plus, and then where the VF is, we would write VI plus A delta T. Okay? Now, we know one more thing, and that is we know VAV is equal to delta D over delta T. So we could also take this, and sub it into this equation that we're forming for Vav. And if we did that, we would get delta D over delta T is equal to, well, Vi plus Vi should be just 2Vi plus A delta T. Okay? Oh, I lost my 2. Where did that go? Oh, all of this is over 2. Sorry, I lost that 2 when I subbed in. So all of this is over too. There we go. Okay. Um, now we're looking for distance traveled or displacement. So we want to get an equation with this delta T by itself. So to do that, we could multiply everything by delta T. So it would be become delta D alone on this side. When we multiply 2VI by delta T, it becomes 2VI delta T. And when we multiply a delta t squared by delta t, it becomes a delta t. Sorry, when we multiply a delta t by delta t, it becomes a delta t squared. Still over 2. I don't really like this fraction here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as two separate um, fractions. So 2vi delta t over 2 and a delta t squared over 2. And the advantage of doing it that way is now these twos will cancel. And when they do, I get delta D is equal to VI delta T. And then this A on the bottom, we or uh, 2 on the bottom, we usually write it as 1 half A delta T squared. And this is our first wonderful, amazing equation. You have it on this sheet that I gave you the other day. See it right there in the middle, boxed. So take your highlighter, take your colored pencils, take whatever, highlight it, box it, put arrows around it, have fireworks coming out of it, put hearts around it. This is probably the most used equation in all of physics, okay? Delta D is equal to VI delta T plus one half A delta T squared. So that's one. 
That's the one for distance traveled and displacement. The second one we said we wanted to get was one for final speed or final velocity. Okay? So we're going to go back now to our A equals VF minus VI over delta T. And we're going to rearrange it for delta T this time. So it'll be, take the delta T up, bring the A down. It'll be VF minus VI over A. And once we have this, we're now going to take this expression for delta T and we're going to fill it into our new equation we just found. Okay, so we have delta T is equal to VI delta T plus one half A delta T squared. And now everywhere there is a delta T, I'm going to fill in my, v, my VF minus VI over A. So this is going to become delta D is equal to VI brackets, VF minus VI over A, close the brackets, plus one half A brackets, VF minus VI over A, close the brackets, squared. Okay, so my first term, when I multiply through, I will have VI, VF minus VI times VI will be VI squared. And these are both over A. Plus one half A. And this will be A on the bottom. Now, uh, A squared on the bottom. Now remember, squaring VF minus VI, so that's like VF minus VI times VF minus VI. Right? When you square it, you have to foil it. So we'll get, put this in brackets here, VF squared minus, that's the um, first, outer will be minus VF VI, inner will be minus, or excuse me, plus, because it's negative, negative, uh, inner, no, I, uh, VF VI negative, this is negative, uh, VF VI, and then last VI squared, so plus VI squared, so this is a negative here, sorry about that. Okay, close the bracket. Well, this A here in front of the bracket and the squared on this A will cancel, so it'll just leave as A on the bottom. And now we have A on the bottom of both, so we could bring it up here. So it, would become, it could become A delta D is equal to VI VF minus VI squared plus the half is still here. Inside, uh, we have VF squared minus VFVI minus VFVI will be minus 2 VFVI and then plus VI squared. And the A's are gone because I brought them to the, I multiplied everything by A. Um, I could actually multiply everything by 2 if I wanted to get rid of this 1 half. And if I did that, this term would become 2AD. This term would become 2VIVF. The next term would be minus 2VI squared. And now I can drop the brackets because I multiplied by 2, so the half's gone. So it'll be plus VF squared minus 2VFVI plus VI squared. 2VIVF minus 2VFVI, these are going to cancel each other out. Negative 2VI squared plus VI squared is going to leave me with a minus VI squared. So I'm going to have 2A delta D is equal to minus VI squared plus VF squared. We said we wanted to get an equation for VF, so bring your VI squared over. So we'll have VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta D. This is our second new equation. It is also on your sheet at the bottom. So box it, put pretty colors around it, arrows into it, fireworks and hearts and everything else coming out of it. This is the second great well-known kinematics equation. In the next video that I'll do, I'll show you how we'll use them. Okay, and you will need to know these, but not to worry, we'll use them 10 or 20,000 times before the test, and you will know them by the time the test comes along. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video of how to use these two.